Hi everybody, I'm Shelly and this is the Edgy Gardener channel. So glad you found me. Today I'm going to be working on a project on this fence behind me. I have been looking forward to this since early, early spring and there's just been so many things that have gotten in the way, but today I'm going to start and hopefully finish it. What I want to do is put a Belgian fence design uh, right here. I think that would be so neat. I think it will hide the fence structure just a little bit and make it seem like we are surrounded by even more green, almost like a green wall. Now, I had to look this up because I didn't know exactly what it was. I've been familiar with espalier, right? When you take apple trees or pear trees and you have them grow laterally. Well, Belgian fence is a design, but it's not lateral. It is diamonds instead. And um, so I just, I just think it would be a really, really neat thing to have along this fence. You know, it, it's a long, there are a lot of lateral lines going across here and uh, I love to be surrounded by greenery and I think that will kind of bring things in and make an even more intimate space back here than what we have already. So I have a lot of tools, my tape measure, a Sharpie, I have these eye hooks which I'm going to be putting into the fence and I have maybe 48 of these, I'll have to count them. I have two different sizes because the store didn't have all the same size. What I have most of is one and a half inches. And I wanted this part to be as small as possible because I really do not want any of the hardware going through to the other side of the fence for the neighbor's sake. But I did want it to go in enough to where it will hold the wire, galvanized steel wire here. And I have two packages of this and I hope I have enough. I also have a drill and uh, some other odds and ends here. We'll see how much of it I'm going to use. I'm going to show you my design here. I'm going to use white flowered chocolate vine. I know I could have gotten ivy, uh, but I, just, I wanted something that flowered and this looked so neat and pretty with its variegated leaf and its light colored flowers and they're supposed to smell like chocolate. So that's a good thing any day of the week. I've never grown chocolate vine before, um, but I bought two plants and they grow, they grow 15 to 20 feet long and my Belgian fence is only going to be four and a half by 24. So if I have two of those, that should fill in the space just fine. And they're very trainable. And I was trying to find the zones. Oh, the zones are five to nine. And I am recently rated a zone six here. So that should be good. If this doesn't work out, if it's either too unruly or it just doesn't train like I want it to, then I will switch to English Ivy. And I sold this project to Holdegger. You know, he doesn't like a lot of my ideas. They just, cause they always need more work. And of course they do. But I, I sold it to him because it would just, it would look just like the wall at Wrigley Field. And Holdegger is a massive baseball fan. So anything that looks or feels like baseball, he's in. So you just gotta sell it right, right? Okay, so let's get started. Instead of going to the trouble of hooking my iPad up to the camera, I am just going to hold it up like this. I don't know how everybody else keeps track of what their ideas are and what their projects are in the garden, but I use my notes. I am a Mac user, so you know, I have a Mac computer, Mac laptop, I have an Apple phone, and then an iPad. And if I can get to the right note, here we go. <laughs> so I kind of drew out my idea. I measured the fence, how much of it I wanted the design <laughs> in my rough notes. So only, I took the bottom of the fence on top of my Coreopsis because you can see the Coreopsis here. I didn't want to have a design that was lower than the full grown Coreopsis. So that would be four feet, four and a half feet from there to the top of the fence. And then I have, is that backwards for you? It's backwards for me, 24 feet across. Okay, so that gives me the opportunity to do, I wanted at least 12 diamonds and I wanted the diamonds to be two feet big because I wanted the diamonds to be big enough to where the plant could grow and have a line on all four sides, but also still big enough to see the internal shape of the diamond. 
So I didn't know how to design that. So I went to my dad and he opened his CAD program and he gave me this design here. And this is fabulous. Okay, you can see the reflection of my rose in the background. But so this gives me 12 full diamonds all the way across. And what I have to do is start from the beginning and measure. Each one of these will be 24 inches apart. And then I'll start in the middle here, go down 12 inches and 24 inches. And then from here to here to each cross section will be another 24 inches. So I will mark those holes with my Sharpie and then each one of those, I will put the, the eye hook in and then attach the wire. That's the plan. I have been intimidated by this project the whole time because it's a lot of math and it's a lot of measuring. And in the beginning, I start measuring every eighth of an inch. And towards the end, I'm kind of like, mm, it goes right about there. And so I am not an exact person and I don't want this to be obvious. I don't want my lack of mathematics to be obvious because it's a very geometrical design and I think, um, I, I don't think it's very forgiving to bad measuring. But I am going to try it. I'm very excited to get started and to see this growing. <laughs> Okay, so everything has been measured, holes have been drilled, and the eye hooks have been screwed in. And I counted 63 eye hooks. It seems like there should be an even number of 64, so I could have miscounted. But you saw me in the film using this, not my pointer holder. I'll put that over there. <laughs> you saw me using this, and this isn't because the eye hooks were really difficult to screw in. It's a it's an older fence, the wood is pretty soft, but this was just to save my wrist. After doing so many of those screws, I don't have very strong wrists anyway, so I thought this would be a muscle saver and my tomorrow self would thank me for using this today. So the next step is to wind the wire. And you know, I don't know if I needed an eye hook at every single junction. At first when I was planning the the project, I thought that I could just stretch the wire, you know, over four feet and not do an eye hook. But when I was talking to my dad and he was drawing the CAD program, uh, he and the hole digger both agreed that I should just do the hooks at every junction, just so it is nice and secure. Now, all of the eye hooks are different sizes because I was at the hardware store and they didn't have enough of any one of the sizes. So I, so the three sizes I used are one and three sixteenths, one and five eighths, and then one and a half. And the one and a half were the largest ones. And I thought that those were going to be too big and too bulky when I bought them. But after I started putting them in, which would be these up here, they weren't as obvious and, uh, bulky as I thought they would be. And then when I got down to the to the smallest ones, uh, which I thought would be what I wanted, those actually might be a little bit too weak. But those are generally all on the bottom half. So it's an experiment, so we will see. And uh, so now the next step is the wire. I don't know if you can see in the camera how the eye hooks line the fence there, but I know that they are not exact. My tape measure was moving all over the place and uh, sometimes I had to move over because maybe there was a split or a, um, a weak spot in the wood. And uh, so it is, <laughs> it's not the way an engineer would do it. But like I said before, hopefully once the plants get up there, it'll be the general idea. So this is a few days later. 
not necessarily because the project is that difficult, but more because I am doing the project in small pockets of time. And we are now on to the wire part of the project. I had to do some research and watch some videos to see how to start the process. I start to feel paralyzed in the processing of some details like this. And uh, I was worried about messing up the design, getting lost in the hooks and ending up not having triangles, but just like a spider web of wire. So I needed to come up with a pattern. And the pattern that I am going to do is just the angles across the fence. We're gonna start that way and see how it works. Okay, so you can see that we are halfway done with the lines, with the wires of the fence. And they're all, I don't, I don't even know if you can see, yes, there you go. They're all going one direction. And then I will start from here and I will go the other direction and then we'll see the diamonds form. And for the hooks, the top and the bottom, this is what I did. I looped the wire in here and with the extra, I just wound it around and then usually they were pretty long, so I folded it back and uh, wound it around this way. So it's a little bit thick up here, but really from a distance, you're not going to be able to see it. Actually from a distance, you can barely see the wire as it is. I am hoping that I got a strong enough wire. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of choices there, but this is what we, this is what we wound up with. It's experimental. There are actually not even that many videos that I could find on doing the process the way that I needed it to be done here. So uh, like everything else I do, it is experimental and you guys are along for the ride. Okay, we are one step closer to the fun part and that is winding that chocolate vine around these wires. Okay, the wire is all up and the diamonds are created. Now, when I imagined this project, I really did think that there would be these obnoxious, empty wires, <laughs> you know, this geometric pattern on the fence that to non-gardeners just wouldn't make sense. And it would take a while for the plants to grow in and make sense. But really, this wire is so thin that from a distance, you can barely see it. So I am very happy with that. That was a nice surprise. What I'm gonna do now is try and take this chocolate vine who has been planted here, maybe since um, Mother's Day, and unweave it from these chimes here. It has been growing pretty well, and I'm worried that if I don't do it gently, then it's going to break into pieces. However, if that happens, I know it will grow, but it is even here winding around itself. So I am gonna go through this tedious process and try and get this vine detached and then reattach it to my diamonds up here. I am generally somebody who loves to detangle knots, you know, piece by piece to study them and to spend the time in getting them untangled. But when the knots can break, that makes it a little bit more challenging. I may end up just cutting this back. I don't know how much patience I have for this. Okay, I ended up taking down the chimes and I did lose part of a vine. And I don't know, this might be a little over two feet and see how it was winding, all these little curly cues, how it was winding on itself. I don't know if I can root this. I will look this up and try. I'm not familiar with chocolate vine. I don't even know if we have chocolate vine in my area. I know it's in my zone, but I don't remember seeing it in my nurseries. I was out of state visiting my grandmother and my mom for Mother's Day, and I found this at one of their nurseries in Oklahoma, so I brought it home. And I'm thinking that I might have been able to buy three, but I was trying to be economical and stretch two. I hope I don't regret that. Another thing that I am concerned with in this project just a few things are the are the different sizes of eye hooks that I used and what I was thinking the biggest ones were my 
last choice and I was trying with the smaller ones, I'm glad I have so many of the bigger ones. And my concern is that the smaller ones might be too small and not strong enough to hold the weight. Luckily, those are all towards the bottom where there shouldn't be as much weight on the bottom as there would be on top. But um, maybe I should have held out and gone to more stores and looked for the larger ones. The other one is I do hope, my other concern is I do hope I did get the right gauge wire and that that is thick enough to hold this. And sometimes, you know, it's, there's not a lot of gap between the fence and the wire. And I hope that doesn't cause issues either. Like I said, I couldn't find a whole lot of information on this Aspaye Belgian fence when they weren't having to do with trees. So it is a live and learn situation. And we are tied into a knot here. Oh, I lost another piece. Okay, so here is the plant. Let's see if I can separate these into individual tendrils. This would have been a lot smaller to keep these in the can and not plant them until I was ready or to plant them and just keep them trimmed. But, um, I never seem to do things the easy way. Okay, so I'm moving on to the second one, which I'm thinking is going to be a little bit easier. This right here, if you're wondering, this is our pool skimmer. We attach these hooks to the fence here, and then we lay this here. And I, I didn't want it in the middle or in the top of the fence. I kind of wanted it hidden by flowers, which makes it pretty difficult for the hole digger to get to, but uh, we're both willing to suffer through that for the aesthetics. And of course, it's a bright blue pole, so it doesn't matter what I plant here, uh, we always see it. There's another reason uh, the babies always want to play. The, well, another reason is whenever the little boys are over here, they, they always want to know what it is and always want to play with it. So the more it's hidden, the less we have to deal with that. Okay, so I think I have some good branches to work with here. So another project done in the books. I am so excited to have this done. Like I said earlier, 
I have had this plan since early spring and I oh it just feels so good to have it done and I know it doesn't look like much right now but I am full of confidence that it will grow in and look fabulous and uh, I will watch the vines as they continue to grow and keep on weaving them around. And this vine wants to vine and wants to grab onto things, so I think it'll do just fine. And I'm also, again, very excited that you can't see the wire, you can't see the diamonds from, from just the other side of the patio. And I am going to do some research to see if I can root the other pieces of that chocolate vine and then maybe I can plunk more pieces in like right there where that tiny gap between the concrete and the patio. So that is the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. If you have any experience with this, my gosh, I would love to see pictures. I would love to hear how you did it. And I will continue to update as this fills in. And uh, as always, I hope you guys have time in your gardens. Bye. This is just a few weeks later and you can see all of the new growth. And luckily the new growth shows off by being bright green Let's get a little bit closer. These tendrils are actually quite easy to wind around. I'm able to wind them around the wire and not even lose a lot of these little leaves here, but I am so happy at how fast it is growing. I even have some fully formed diamonds almost in the making. Well, I guess I have one fully formed diamond right there and I think it'll continue to bush out and get thicker. And some of the vines start growing around one another and they don't have much leaf growth, but once I separate them, I think they will do that. And it looks like I need to feed them because they look a little bit chlorotic. But this much growth this quickly makes me very happy and I think that by next summer, I might have this whole diamond pattern filled in. Super excited. Thanks again, guys.